I'm going to be focusing on describing the, the work that was presented, summarized in the in one of the papers that, as, as mentioned by by the uh, the guest editor, uh, the regarding modeling a, a, an application to energy storage systems in power grids. Uh, the work is basically being carried out by the researchers listed here. So see my screen uh, and. Just a second, I'm trying to get organized here. Um, the research objectives of this work are basically focused on the um, developing model with uh, operation of proper operation of features and constraints. So trying to capture as accurately as possible uh, the behavior of energy storage systems. Uh, and it, the integration of these models into existing mathematical models as, and software tools, uh, because that was an important part of our work uh, uh, in collaboration with industry. And, the, uh, and then uh, evaluate the contributions and impact that these energy storage may have on actual power systems, including transmission and microgrids. We focus specifically in we focus specifically in in uh, four uh, four basic technologies: compressed air energy storage, flywheels, batteries, and uh, uh, thermal energy storage. Why these technologies? Because our, our collaboration with industry, particularly the system operator of, of Ontario, eh, eh, was had deployed these technologies and wanted to understand better what is the impact and how you model them with respect to the to the uh, uh, to their network. So we started with compressed energy storage, which is described there, which is, which, which are plants already deployed in, in in the world, a couple of them, and most are in uh, 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 others in the work, but basically. What we focus on was trying to develop a, a, a model, detailed model of diabetic, a, a diabetic, diabetic, pardon me, diabetic uh, compressed energy storage system, CAES. And the, most of the work was actually interestingly focused on, uh, on me, uh, basically a thermomechanical type of modeling, which has to be very detailed and has to include a, a, a series of things to be basically be able to reproduce the behavior of this machine. And then we focus on the application to the power systems. And we looked at multiple cases. I'm not, I, won't go in, well, I won't get into the details, but basically what you observe here is that compressed energy storage systems are, especially if they are decoupled, they, as shown here, the, the, the generation, the charging and discharging, the generation and, and motor are decoupled in, in terms of charging and discharging. You can provide multiple service to the, to the, to the grid. So here we, have, we see frequency, changes in frequency, how the advantages of having of having a compressed energy storage uh, is uh, 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 useful for the system, if you will. Uh, voltage control as well, which shows that the significant advantage for the power system. Uh, we also looked at other applications, operations and uncertainties, in terms of the, uh, from the point of view of an investor perspective, uh, the, the, and, and from a point of view of uh, accounting for uncertainties, system and market uncertainties in these type of models. And we also look at behind the mirror compressed energy storage, also motivated by the fact that uh, industry, the industry collaborators that we were, uh, were involved in this project, in these projects, were looking at how to reduce the peak, uh, the peak cost. So um, um, basically demonstrated through this work that because they had the capability of having uh, underground storage, that that they would actually uh, uh, well, pay for the pay for the for the device or pay for the system and also in, in, in uh, have great benefit savings for the for the for the uh, for the customer. And then we looked at battery energy storage systems. Particularly, we're interested at distributed energy battery energy systems because there's a lot of uh, what is happening uh, is that there's a lot of deployment of battery energy system, particular distribution system level medium voltage. Uh, and, and that seems to be the future of, of all that low voltage as well, but that seems to be the future of how this is gonna, batteries are gonna be uh, interacting with the transmission system. And we looked at, we were focused particularly on the aggregated model. So what you can see here is that if, okay, what we could see here, what we could see here is that basically you have a distribution system and medium voltage system connected to the grid and what kind of models you can have using artificial intelligence, neural neural models basically divided in P and Q, the kind of services that it could provide. And basically what you observe, or what we looked at is multiple uh, power and, and, and active reactive and active power controls 
that can provo provide a series of, of, of services for the system in terms of voltage control, power frequency, more related. And, and also we were particularly interested in what, what the impact of uh, energy capacity would have in the system, which can be quite significant. So that's one of the caveats when you're dealing with these type of systems. Then we looked at the issue of applying energy storage systems, particularly we looked at uh, uh, wheels and uh, batteries. Uh, what kind of impact it has in the in the uh, control of the frequency control of the system? And this is an interesting point of view that is being uh, applied in the north uh, northeast of uh, of the U.S., in which you basically divide the signal in two two parts, uh, a slow and a fast signal. And one of the advantages of this is that, and I and I and, I, and others question the need for virtual energy for virtual inertia, is that you can use this energy storage system, the fast response, leave, leave the traditional generators to provide frequency regulation and have, has the, the, these fast en uh, energy services to regulate frequency. One of the other uh, issues that had to be dealt with is communication delays. In actual power systems, you can have significant communication delays when you when you send these signals. So, and that we observe as well and, and, and advise the system operator that, in fact, if you want to introduce energy storage services for frequency regulation, you first have to resolve the issue of communication delays. So we develop basically for the ISO, for the Independent Electricity System Operator of Ontario, we develop a, a model and a, and a control system that would allow basically divide the frequency signals in two parts. And then we looked at what kind of impact they had in the system. And then what you can observe here, which is hard to see because it's a lot of information you can, it's better describing the system, but basically what it, saw, what it shows is that as events happen in the system, the air control error, when you have these fast services, improves significantly. And then we move on to the issue of, in the context of microgrids, uh, not as much in the context of uh, power systems, of uh, power grids or transmission grids, is, a, is the, if, the impact and the modeling of uh, thermal energy storage systems. So basically we looked at combined heat and power, boilers, heat pumps, buildings, water tanks, and also brick furnaces. And we looked at how to model them in the context of energy management system, how to dispatch the system in this, in this sense. And something that we observe and, and apply at a particular application at a community in Northern Ontario, the more community of a brick uh, furnace, uh, therm uh, brick furnace that basically interests the electrical and thermal energy storage system, thermal energy storage system, is the advantages which are briefly uh, highlighted here is that as renewable energy, uh, uh, renewable energy is integrated or is added to the system, you present you you basically increase savings and provide better services for the grid. And we do look at the same issue with more more thermal energy storage systems in a microgrid in the Polytechnical Divari, with, in collaboration with colleagues at that institution, in which they have a, a, a microgrid in where they have uh, heat pumps, uh, boilers, uh, the electrical system, and other thermal system, including combined heat and power. And basically, what we show is that through this here is that how you can dispatch all these services to reduce basically uh, impact on the grid or be, uh, optimally operate the grid. And then we looked at how you can use these uh, uh, type of storage systems in, in, in specifically the house, which is storage system, basically the air condition and interaction with the house, ground source heat pumps in both, in both modes, heating and cooling, and the, uh, uh, the tank to basically regulate frequency in a power system. And, and we demonstrated in this work that basically with an application to a remote community in British Columbia, we, lo we noticed that as you in introduce these services, why you introduce these, uh, these systems, you can basically have a significant impact on the frequency regulation to a point in which you start with a system that has very, because there's a lot of solar components in this case, how it varies significantly that the, the generator, the diesel generator cannot regulate properly, and as you introduce these services, how you can, especially with ground source heat pumps, how you can regulate the frequency within the boundaries uh, required by the system. So to conclude within my 10 minutes, I believe, he, he, and I, 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 I would like to provide some conclusions of this, I'm spelling here, conclusions and the outlook of this work. So that work basically focused, as you can see in the paper, in electrical grid studies and market integration of these particular four, four type of energy storage systems, batteries, flywheels, compressed air energy storage, and thermal energy storage. And then we looked at the main features, topologies, power conditioning control, uh, strategies that each one of these systems can, uh, uh, can provide, and, and the state-of-the-art models that uh, uh, were also presented. 
And then we looked at applications of, uh, of attributes and benchmark system to demonstrate the benefits of frequency and voltage relation and other services that these, these systems can provide to power grids and microgrids. Uh, looking at future research, I think that uh, we believe that one of the uh, main, uh, main uh, areas of research that can be explored is the hybrid use of these technologies. So coordination between different technologies like we, the, like we showed in, in our work between batteries and energy and thermal energy storage system between or home and any uh, electric vehicle batteries. Although I'm, a, I'm not a firm believer of uh, V2G type of technology because of cost, but that's an, that's an interesting, uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, area of study that can be, can be pursued further. Uh, also look at the, uh, at the issue of grid, which we saw already discussed in the previous two presentations, uh, how, grid, how, how these energy storage uh, services in, uh, or systems in grid forming can, uh, and grid forming uh, uh, operation can basically enable 100% uh, uh, renewable, uh, 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 renewable energy source integration uh, in power grids in transmission sy systems, which has already been demonstrated uh, uh, in, in, in terms of uh, simulations and actual deployments for microgrid applications. So this is this has been demonstrating these microgrids as being feasible. And an another area that we believe is, is important to explore is that with all these sensing, uh, uh, all these data available, becoming more, more available in, in both power systems and microgrids, that data-driven uh, AI and machine learning-based uh, technologies should be explored as practical alternatives, as, demonstra as demonstrated for our, on our work on battery and storage systems in this, in this period. Thank you.